So good morning, Lana, in our today's lesson. And our science lesson today is going to be compost manure. Remember where we left? We had discussed about the materials that are used to make the compost manure. And we mentioned number one, we have what we call vegetable peelings. All vegetable peelings in the kitchen talk about potatoes, potato peelings, potato peelings, etc. Then I'm going to you so what we call the leftovers of foods that we have already seen and some parts of, uh, some pieces have remained. That is also very, very important. Talk about the leaves. Leaves can also be used in this to make the compost uh, 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 manure. Then we have what we call the kitchen refuse. Kitchen refuse. If you are cooked to Gali and you have washed us here, what, what comes from there is uh, kitchen refuse. You can use this in the, in the compost uh, uh, manure. And I, as I told you last time, we have two ways of preparing the compost uh, manure. We have what we call the compost pit. You can use the compost pit compost pit and you can also use the compost pit. So most of the time the exam they ask about the compost pit and that is what I'm going to discuss today. The compost pit. You want to see what what entails the compost pit. So in, in that I'm going to have a diagram to explain that. I'm going to have a diagram here. Yeah? look like this so that you can be able to explain the compost the compost pit remember it's a pit of one meter by one meter by one meter that is one meter high one meter width and one meter length so this is what we call the compost the compost pit so it's going to look like that. A compost pit has a number of uh, uh, divisions. They can, depending on where the examiner wants you to, because the tray can put, there are six, six partitions of a compost pit. One can be found here, all of, or sometimes all of them, the six of them can be found here. So I'm going to explain where only one is found here, the rest, each are five, are going to be found here. So on top here, what I've drawn there on top there, these are leaves. We have leaves on top there. Then from there, we're going to have the first layer, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So there are going to be three, five layers here, one on this side. So the first layer, is going to be, I'm talking about dry leaves, just dry leaves, don't put green ones. Dry leaves, so the second layer is going to be top soil, top soil, then of course this is going to be ash, the whole ash, this is going to be farm yard manure. Going to the kitchen refuse. And lastly, we are going to have maize stocks. Maize stocks. So these are the layers that are found in a, in a compost pit. They are arranged in layers. At the bottom there, we have maize stocks. No maize stocks are, 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 are very difficult for water to go through. So we are going to see the importance of each one of them. So we know so why we have the topsoil, number one, dry leaves. What happens in the dry leaves? It's our layer number one. What's the importance of dry leaves? Because this happens in an exam. So we can, we can really differentiate the materials here by having uh, by having those different layers. The 
then of course the last one this one prevents something important so those are the materials so Nana, there's one reason uh, where I put five year and one year because sometimes the examiner can decide to put the six of them here so that year will begin with dry leaves at the point number one year not here, here so whenever you get this question in the exam and they ask you what is point X before you come to that point X because they have not labeled it let, count the number of partitions from bottom how many are they? if five are going to enter here Definitely the other one for the sixth one is going to be on this side. But if all of, all of them six are going to enter here, now you label it from down here. I'm going to give you a formula how to label them. Without you just get the formula right direct and then just label. So what is the importance of top, uh, the dry leaves found on the top of the compost uh, pit? The importance is to prevent evaporation of available water the water is available in this particular compost pit remember this compost pit is supposed to be moist not wet so sometimes you will sprinkle water we are coming to that you sprinkle water during dry season you sprinkle water to make it moist so that the bacteria can be able to work a bacteria cannot work in a dry environment so it needs to work in a, in a, in a moist environment just allow some, 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 some sprinkle of water so that the heat becomes moist and then you can be able, be able to work from there. So, we will be asking the exam, what is the importance of dry leaves? The importance of dry leaves is to prevent evaporation of the available water in the, in the compost pit. Number two, from top there is topsoil. What is the importance of topsoil in this particular heat? The layer of soil, of course, is going to introduce decomposers. Introduces, introduces decomposers. When talk about decomposers of bacteria in the heat. So this, we are bringing top soil to bring decomposers in the heat. Remember what we said, Lana, in class four. We discuss about uh, 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 the components of soil, the components of soil, and we say the components of soil are five. Number one, we have organic matter, we have water, we have air, living organisms, and number five, we have what we call uh, the mineral particles. There are five parts of our, of our soil. So soil is composed of five things. So there's one important thing that is we've mentioned here that is going to be. Uh, um, um, the, 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 the living organisms. The living organisms in a soil they are very very important because they they aerate the soil. They make the soil porous. As they make ways inside the soil, the soil becomes porous, and so the soil can be able to breathe. If 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 uh, you plant a crop there, it can be able to breathe using the the roots. So those decomposers are only found on the top soil. You can't find them deep into the soil there. So. For us to be able to get the composers in this heap, we go and scoop the top fertile soil because they only live in a top fertile soil. And the fertile soil in any, in, any, in any ground are only found on top. So we go and scoop that top fertile soil and bring into the heap so that we can bring what? We can bring uh, um, the decomposers or the bacteria. So that's the reason why we are the top soil, not the bottom soil, the top soil. So this is to introduce. To introduce the composers into the heap. Then from there, of course, we have the number three layer, and that is going to be the hash. What's the importance of hash in that particular heap? Now, hash adds additional additional nutrients, and that is what comes in the exam. It adds additional nutrients. Adds additional meaning that. There are already nutrients here because the materials are nutritious in, in value. They have a nutritional value. So they already have some, some nutrients, but now we are adding more nutrients in there. Okay. Then number four, number four, we have what we call the farmyard manure. 
Some people con confuse farmyard manure and topsoil. I want to explain the importance of farmyard manure. The farmyard manure is a fine, fine uh, uh, materials that we get from, 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 from the, the cow shed, from the, 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 the chicken house. It is fine, it's already been composed. So we are bringing it into the heat so that it can become food for the bacteria and the composers. So these are acts as, as food as food for the bacteria. Bacteria, straw, decomposers. So this is going to act as food. So they are going to feed on this. While they continue with the action of decomposing the, the, the heap, they are going to be feeding on the farmyard that they have just introduced. And lastly, I want to talk about the last part, which is the main stocks. Main stocks. Main stocks are very important. Where else we have the adrenalines prevent the evaporation of water upward, now these main stocks prevent uh, uh, loss of water downwards. So prevents prevents water from seeping downward, seeping in the soil downwards. When it rains, you see water that going down the soil. So if, if remember we have dug this pit, one meter, one meter width, one meter length, and one meter height. If we leave without putting materials at the bottom, which can prevent water from seeping down, whenever you sprinkle water here, it's supposed to remain there. Because the, the amount of water is very little, so it's supposed to remain in the heap. But if you don't have put these materials, the water that we spill is going to seep down the soil and you are going to be left with materials which are very dry and so the composers will not act on those materials because there is no way. The medium in which they are acting upon on these materials is very dry so they cannot be able to work. So that's why we have the main stocks. We place the main stocks down there to prevent any loss of water down on the soil. So that's all about the compost manure. London is a lot of uh, things that are remaining as far as this compost manure is remaining but we can't discuss all of them at the same time because I want you to get what we are doing right so we have said dry leaves prevent the evaporation of the available water from the from the, the heap then we have the topsoil which is increasing the, 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 the composer bacteria ash additional nutrients farmyard manure acts as food for the bacteria and mestos that prevent downward movement of water. Now, Lana, I want to give you a formula, or well, now you'll be able to remember all these particular items here. So, I want to give you a formula, very easy one, and uh, when you do it, then you will always get the answers correct. Remember some of the questions that come from this particular area is that. What is the point X? What is point L? What is the importance of point Y? So you must know what that point Y is just from onset and you'll be able to write the correct answer. So we want to start from the top here. From the top, you say, because top, you pick the first letters D, T, A, F, K, and M. So you write them like this direct, direct, two, Assemble from Kisumu land markets. I know I know what assemble is. There's a market in uh, those uh, the western part of Kenya. So I just pick this to be direct to assemble from Kisumu market. So I pick the first letter T. Dry leaves. Topsoil, ash, farmyard manure, kitchen refuse, and main stocks. And we are done with that. So whenever you get a question of this that requires you to label or they ask you the importance of certain materials in this particular heap, what you are supposed to do is to write this formula. After writing that formula, Lana, you begin labeling this thing from now. Don't begin labeling from top. You will confuse because you don't know whether the dry leaves are put on the top part or they are put here. That is the importance of labeling from here. So you start from this one. Downward is main stock. You write main stocks, kitchen refuse, farmyard manure, 
has top soil. If all of them, the six of them, fit here, then no, this is not a, 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 a stake. This is not a partition. This is not a layer. So you leave it like that. But if here they fit five, definitely the last, the fit sixth one will be on top there. And they will be there. So I wanted to give you this formula so that none you can be able to get it right. You can write it just beside that particular uh, compost piece and you'll be able to remember every time you get a question like this, you get it very, very fast. The importance of this is very, very important. I'll give you questions at the end of the day uh, regarding this and you'll see how the questions are set in both class 7 and class 8. So until next time, Lana, I want to wish you well. When we come back in our next lesson, Lana, we are going to discuss some of the things that we do to this compost heap to make it uh, decompose very fast and then we can be able to use it in the farm. We are also going to see another method we call the four heap method. How to prepare this using a four heap method. So be tuned, be alert in our next lesson. We are going to learn a lot. Thank you and God bless you.